Horrorcore is a genre of music that was developed in the late 1980s and it had a large fan base. Emma Niederbrock, 16, was a huge fan of the music. Around this time, she had a lot going on in her personal life. Listening to Horrorcore felt like a temporary escape. Her parents had divorced just nine months ago and her father had moved out of the home. Emma was homeschooled by her mother, so a lot of her days were spent alone in her room where she had a cluster of online virtual friends. One of her online friends was Melanie Wells, who was 18. Mel had just dropped out of high school, but she was working on her GED. Though Emma and Mel had never personally met, they became fast friends over the internet. Another fan of horrorcore was 20-year-old guy she met named Richard Samuel Makowski. Everyone had cool nicknames that chatted online about the music. He referred to himself as Psycho Sam. Emma and Sam quickly had an online love affair and they were head over heels with each other over the phone. They chatted every day for hours and they referred to each other as girlfriend and boyfriend. They discussed their future. They even started to end their phone calls with, I love you. Sam was going through his own set of problems. His father had put his mother out of the home which put Sam in a depression. He lived in California with his father and his 21-year-old sister. Sam was a high school dropout who went to high school again and dropped out again. He had also gotten bullied in high school for being overweight and having red hair. He never fought anyone unless provoked, said his sister, Sarah Mikowski. Sam was troubled. But other than that, he was an aspiring to be a hardcore rap artist. And talking to Emma, though she was far away in Virginia, she was like a breath of fresh air. By this time, Emma's mother, Deborah S. Kelly, was a little worried about Sam's, about Emma and Sam's online relationship. She confided with her newly divorced ex-husband, who was a pastor. It had became a big change in Emma's wardrobe. The pink hair, the black clothes, the extreme makeup. But other than that, Emma gave no problems. She was still a good kid. A horrorcore concert was coming to Michigan and Emma was overwhelmed and excited and hoping she could go. If she could go, she would get to see her best online friend, Mel, and she would see her new boyfriend, who could fly in from California. Things couldn't get any better for Emma. Apprehensive, but ultimately saying yes, Emma's mother agreed to go, and Emma's pastor father was going along too. It was the only way Emma was going to see the concert. When Emma and Mel saw each other for the first time, they hugged each other with excitement. When Emma saw Sam, he wasn't who she thought he was. Her expectations were not met. At 16 years old, it was written all over her face. She became distant and standoffish and Sam felt it. She even sent him text messages during the trip saying that she wanted to see other people. She never said that they were exclusive and this angered Sam. Emma and Mel sitting together laughing and smiling. Sam felt left out. Sam had made plans to stay longer in Virginia before he knew that Emma was going to change her mind about how she felt about him. Sam and Mel would go back to Emma and her mother's house for the remainder of the trip. Emma 
really did not want this to happen. She didn't want Sam to be there, and it showed. On September 15th, 2009, around 3 a.m., Sam had taken some painkillers he brought with him. He smoked some marijuana and he began drinking alone in the room that he was stored in at the Nita Brock's house. Everyone was asleep but him. He crept through the house. He picked up a ball peen hammer and a wood spinning maul. He had got a dark idea. His first victim was Mel. She was asleep on a downstairs couch. He would strike her in the head multiple times with the weapons he found. Next, he went upstairs to Emma's mother's room. Deborah Kelly had fell asleep in a love seat sitting up. He would strike her in the head multiple times, bludgeoning her. Blood splatter everywhere. Then he went to Emma in her downstairs bedroom. He opened up the door. He watched her sleeping. He then would strike her fiercely multiple times and bludgeoning her to death. The next few days, he stayed in the house with the deceased bodies. He even did an attempt to clean up and move the bodies all together in one room. He ignored phone calls that were coming in for the family. Mel's mother consistently kept calling. A police welfare check was even issued to the home. Sam told the police that the family had went to the movies. And the police left. The neighbors would see him outside and they called the police. They just knew something suspicious was going on at the Nita Brock's home. The police came yet again. They even asked to come inside and they went inside. They looked around. They say there was no suspicious things going on in that house. He made up a lie to where the family was. So they left. After two days of calling, Emma's father decided to take a ride and check on his family. Sam opened the door, and as he walked past with no hesitation, Sam would forcefully strike him in the back of the head with the maul. Mark Niederbrock would hit the floor, and he died. Sam had recorded a video in the home where he was contemplating his suicide. He said that he knew he had to pay for what he just did. Sam had killed the four people that he had just been with days ago. At one point, Sam even tried to drive in one of the cars and he was ticketed for having no license by the police. Sam would finally make it to the Richmond International Airport so he can catch his flight to go back to California. He would soon, finally, be arrested in the airport. Police had found the four bodies piled up in the Nita Brock home. Today in 2021, Sam, Psycho Sam, Richard, Samuel Makowski, He's serving life in a Virginia State Prison. The death penalty was on the table, but being that he had no violent offense and never had been in trouble with the law, the death penalty was taken off the table. Sam did all this mayhem and carnage because he just wanted an exclusive relationship with Emma.